and people aren't like, you know, Falcon, what happened to Neil Scavenger? Where's it at? I'll be like, you know, I just, I was just sick. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 this is no good. Uh, I don't think these guys are too happy about me looting their entire premise over here. Where's all of our shit? Oh, it's that guy over there. Let's get him. And they surrounded me. Welcome back, everybody, to Falcon Place Neil Scavenger. We're on our way to the Anishabashamba Boom Pow Camp here today. So let's really quickly go ahead over here and scavenge this out. We have storage shed. We will go into this and some lighting as well. We're finding some pretty decent stuff from around here. Ooh. <laughs> Speak of which, uh, another duffel bag, 44 condition. Why, what is ours rocking at right now? Ours is definitely a lot better, but you know what? That's still a lot of money, so... Oh, I can't put you in the bag? Come on! I guess I could put you over here, but the only problem is that we don't have enough room. I really don't want to mess around with everything that's going on over here, so you know what? I'll just leave it behind. I think we have enough money right here to store it up anyway. So we should be fine. So whatever, it's a duffel bag, always good to see those, but ours is in better condition and we can't really carry to sell anyway, so there is that. Another scope! This, however, we can carry to sell and we will because that's a lot of good money for barely any inventory space whatsoever. And that's about it over here. Do another scavenge, we have the office tower, boom, boom, and we got, we got, we got, we got a big sack. <laughs> yeah, he does, no, he, I mean... I, whether I do or don't, it's not really your information to know, you know? I don't really want to flaunt it if I did. And even if I didn't, I wouldn't be like, hey guys, I have a... Let's just get off the topic at hand right now. Um, I mean, we're still rocking the flashlight in case it gets dark on us, so, you know, I probably will. I don't need to carry that. Nah, I don't need to carry that. We're fine. And we only have one more place to go through over here. I would love to find... You know one thing that we have not found that's eluded me this whole run? I mean, everything else we found easily, but... The one thing we have not seen just yet is uh, the small sleeping bag. <laughs> What's that all about? I would love a small little sleeping bag, the portable one, not the giant big one. We've seen the giant big one, but not the small one. What is this one over here? Oh, crackers. Yeah. I'll have you guys. I think you'll probably make me a bit thirsty because you're saltines, but that's all right. We're, we're doing okay with the waterfront. All right, we're cool here. Winter turn. It's a feral dog around Zom Zom's dog. That's a really bad place for you to be at right now, my friend. So we'll come over here. We'll do another scavenge about... Crumbling apartment building. Uh, I should note as well that this is the same day of recording as the last few episodes. So if you see or if you hear me a bit stuffy, a little bit nasally, I'm just, you know, still sick, obviously. It's the same day of recording. I'm not going to get well over, you know, a five episode gap in between um, recordings over here. So it's the same day of recording. I'm only recording a few in batches right now. Just another bag? Jesus Christ. This game loves me today. As a matter of fact, it's loved me the entire run so far. But I'm only trying to record a few of these just in case I get any worse from this point on. I have some episodes already stored up for, you know, releasing over time. And people aren't like, you know, Falcon, what happened to Neil Scavenger? Where's it at? I'll be like, you know, I just, I was just sick. Oh! Oh, oh! Ho, 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 ho! This is no good. Uh... I don't think these guys are too happy about me looting their entire premise over here. Where's all of our shit? Oh, it's that guy over there. Let's get him. And they surrounded me. Oh, look at these guys. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's one more area to check out. We should probably not scavenge this area, Falcon. Let's not push our, our luck here. So how about we do this? We're going to go ahead and turn on the old flashlight here. I'm going to run through these woods. I'm not afraid of these guys, obviously, but, you know, it's three of them. It's a lot of people ready to fight. You know, if I get over... You know, surrounded here, get overrun by these guys, it could be problems. So, I'm just going to go over here and I guess I'll leave that on because we're going to need it to get out of the woods at, uh, next turn. So, we'll enter turn here. Oh, get away from me. Get away. You know what? You had your chance. You left your shit unattended, okay? Finders, keepers, you know the rules. We'll come over here and I think we're fine now. We'll go ahead and turn off the old flashlight. All good. Add some builders to check out, which we will. What? Did I... Huh. You know, on occasion I misclick. <laughs> That's one of them right there. Alrighty. So I hope those guys don't chase me down. I think we should be fine. But you never know what those guys... They might be angry about stuff. You know, oh, he took my stuff. Yeah, well, you, you left him there. Well, can I say, you, you don't see me leaving shit anywhere. I've talked about making the facility my base on occasion. Yeah. But you know what? Even if I was to make that place my base, I wouldn't leave my important stuff there. I'd carry everything important with me. I'd probably leave, like, stuff that I could, you know, easily replace, but not my valuables. Absolutely not. Get out of your mind. 
You oh, stop, stop it. Stop. You really think I I trust anybody out here? I know there's probably a lot of other survivors in this wasteland that pretty much have my same mentality. They're scumbags just like me. They find stuff, they like it, they take it. That's what I do. Oh! <gasps> and the hits just keep on coming. Oh my god, this is just ridiculous, dude. Alrighty, so obviously with this, if you don't know what this is, this is going to be our sleeping bag. That's a portable one. Meaning, normally what I like to do is I like to bring this bad boy over here. Because now, what this is now... What this basically is for us now is going to be our sleeping bag. Uh, over here we just place this in any place we want to sleep at. It'll give us the alertness because of the traps in there, and it'll also give us the higher shelter value because of the tent. So, not the tent, but the, the little sleeping bag we found. <laughs> I was just talking about it too, like, oh man, I'm surprised we haven't seen that, and the game's like, yeah, you are surprised, here you go, Falcon. Things cannot get any better. This is actually pretty poor value, so I'll leave you behind. And we have more pills, no surprise there. Can I stack you over here? Absolutely, I can. The drug man Falcon continues to live. Let's go ahead and... We have two more places to check out. Might as well take advantage of them. We're burdened right now. This is my only big issue because it's limiting us down to five because of the burden issue. We're carrying a lot. I mean, there's really not much that I want to get rid of that we're carrying, so I'll just deal with the four movement speed for a while. The moment we get back to Anishabi camp, we will be able to sell off all the extra stuff and start moving at the five paces again. And over here... Trying to make sure I'm not missing any bullets or something like that. With my luck, I'm probably running into bullets and just missing them or something. But no, we're fine. Alrighty. So that's cool. Uh, thirsty, burdened, yeah, we could have some water, I guess. Let's have some water. It's not going to help us out with our burden issue, but... It'll keep us sated. Plus, we'll be able to get some water once we get to the Anishabi camp. Alright, there you go. Let's go... Maybe through here, I would say. Facilities up to here. I do believe the camp is somewhere in this little area up here. So we still have some traveling to do. But more importantly, since we are moving north, there's a possibility of dogmen at all times. So that's something I was going to keep an eye out on. That's not what I really wanted to do, but you don't know. And turn. Rain time. Okay, player is tired. I mean, there was a place to sleep there, I guess, but maybe in that town. Oh, good. Now I'm in the middle of nowhere. Okay, let's turn you on. Go forward and turn. Am I... You know, it's going to be kind of even harder to find the camp right now with all this darkness going on. So we have this. I do remember it's kind of like north and east. So we'll continue moving up this way. Got to find a bunch of woods at some point. That's when you know you're nearby, when you see a bunch of woods. Our flashlight is still kicking. Is it? One. I think this is going to be the last turn that's going to be on. So, yeah, I guess we'll continue keeping it on. Oh my god. I thought I just ran into like a dogman over here. <laughs> it's a town though. <laughs> Hooey. That um scared me quite a bit. We'll jump in here though. That's going to be the end of our flashlight. Unless we can kind of preserve it for a bit more. Let me turn it off here. See if that even works. I doubt it. We'll end our turn over here for now. Let's go into... Well, we do want to scavenge here. Oh, well, we have the flat, the, the little lighter, so we'll be fine. Maybe we can even get some rest over here because we are quite tired after all. Oh, nice. Potato chips. I will eat you guys now. Okay. Another can. Alrighty, since I'm so filled with luck right now, <clears throat> let me try this again. Uh, you know what we haven't seen in a while, or in this entire run? We haven't seen a cooking pod. Man, that would be really good to run into. Alrighty, so now let's give it a few turns now, and more than likely we'll run into a cooking pot soon enough. That's how the zone has been going so far, so I figure if I just mention it, we'll probably run into it at some point. Uh, prime building. I just hope it doesn't work out with the dogman. I've mentioned the dogman a few times, too. <laughs> it, it works both ways, you know? If it's a good thing, it'll show up. If it's a bad thing, it's going to show up, too. And that's what we're trying to avoid right now. So, got some of this. No cooking pot just yet. Come on, game. Don't keep me in anticipation. You know, you want to give it to me. Just like DMX would probably give it to me. Not not in that way, obviously. I mean, he could if he wanted to, probably, but... Who am I to say no to DMX, right? Uh, let's go up to the high-rise. We'll put our bag over here. Alertness high, shelter high, sleep high. Ho <laughs> ho So good. Let's get some sleep, man. And hopefully it'll be daytime by the time we wake up and we can actually find the camp a lot easier. Alrighty, well, it's daytime at least. 
Where in the world is this camp at? I hope I haven't overshot it. That's my only concern. I mean, you probably can't miss it. It's like a giant, like, you know, stretch of, like, nothing but forest. So it should be pretty apparent when you run into it. Um, so since we're done over here sleeping, let's go ahead and pick up her bag. See how easy that is? You just put a bag down, and you sleep, and then you pick everything up, and you leave, and you're perfectly fine. Good stuff. All right. Um, we'll go up this way. The forest here, but not the forest I'm looking for, it doesn't seem. Come up to... Oh, god damn it. Oh, some shacks, though. Alrighty, sweet. Uh, shacks usually have some really amazing stuff, as we've noticed so far. Scavenge over here. One Shaquille in the forest. Crowbar. Light. One rag. Well then. Speaking of rags. Should be able to remove these guys over here, yeah? And over here? Mm. Still minor cut? We'll leave you on. What about the one on my face that I always have on? Is that one still good? Maybe? Dirty rag. Get on out of here. Hey. Get a clean rag on your face. What's wrong with you? There you go. Alright. And we'll jump to this shack over here, too. Enter. Scavenge. Shack in forest. Speaking of shack, you know what? It's crazy, like... Uh, obviously, I know what happens with age, right? With age, you know, you get bigger, you get bloatier, you know. Um, Shaquille O'Neal was always a big guy. There's no lying that. Even towards the... After his run with the Orlando Magic, he started getting a little bit, you know, heavier, you know? A bit thicker in general. When he was with the Orlando Magic, when he was first drafted... Like, that guy was, like, hardcore in shape, like, really thin, versatile, like, he was just jumping across the goddamn, like, arena. Well, not really, but you know what I mean, right? And then when he got with the Lakers, he got a bit, you know, bulkier, but slower, you know, age catching up to you a little bit. I saw him recently on, I want to take this, mind you, uh, I saw him recently on, well, what happened here? Oh. Arrangement, sure. Uh, I saw him recently on, I'm not even sure what the hell it was, it was just some sort of TV show, and they were asking him questions about something. And, dude, it got big. Like, like, big, big. Like, you know, hey, I'm, I'm a big dude now. Not that I, you know, I, I kind of saw, I think we all probably pretty much saw it based on Shaquille O'Neal's diet and, like, what his body frame was towards the end of his career. You know, like, basically, basketball was the one thing kind of keeping him in shape. But he does seem to have that sort of, like, um, body build where if you don't keep on it, like, um, it's very easy for you to kind of, um, you know, get out of shape. But yeah, I saw him now. I mean, I don't blame him now. Like, you know, he's done playing basketball. Why the hell would you not just finally, finally relax and be like, you know what? I put in my time, you know, dieting, you know, working out every single day, you know, blah, 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 this and that. It's about time for me to unleash and have some good times. And that's probably what he's doing now. But I saw him now, and it was just kind of surprising because n not only did he look big, like, you know, just uh, body frame wise, but he also looked a lot older, and which makes sense. He is older, obviously. But... Sometimes when you have a little bit of extra weight, it does kind of make you seem a bit older than you actually are. So I'm not sure if that actually attested to it, but I saw him and I was just kind of like... When you see something like that, it even hits you more harder that you're getting older yourself. Because I was just like, man... I remember when I was a young kid watching this guy on NBC dunking all over the place, you know, and... Now he's just like an old dude and like, you know, he's out of shape and I'm just like... And you could visibly see it on his face too, you know, just like the thing that he's just like, you know... Just an old dude. And I was just kind of like, man, that's crazy. And, and I think, like, you know, when you see him on TV, like, when you're seeing him, like, in, you know, like, television shows, like, maybe doing, like, broadcasting or something like that, you don't really notice how old people are because they're getting the whole Hollywood type of look to them. You know, getting all the, um... They have, like, all the, the people making them look good. You know, they put the makeup on. They have the perfect lighting. You know, stuff like that. They're touching them up in between, like, you know, segments and stuff. So they always look kind of good. But this was, like, one of those instances where they were talking to him outside of that. Like, he was just... It was probably TMZ, for all I know. And it was just kind of like, you know, Shaquille O'Neal just walking down the street, you know, no reason to have makeup on. And then I was just kind of like, wow, that is crazy, dude. So crazy. Speaking of what's crazy, where the fuck is my Anishabi camp? <laughs> That's crazy. Isn't there enough wooded areas over here? Come on, man. I've been looking for this place for a while now. No, no, Falcon, come on, scavenge the goddamn place. Don't tell me no. But yeah, it's just kind of like really... One second, let me hold that thought for a second. <laughs> Ooh-wee! Okay, um, if you're a first-time viewer, you don't know what this is. 
This is basically um, your get out of free card or get out of free card, get out of free card, get out of jail free card. Any sort of like, you know, terrible injury or disease that you pick up, you can have one of these bad boys and bada bing, bada boom, you're cured up. And we have two charges, meaning I could do it twice. And basically, see the value, 670? Yeah. Really expensive because it's a really amazing rare item. Oh my god. This run is just redonkulous. Redonkulous. Okay, this might... Hey, I think we might be heading there finally, guys. Hold up. Yeah! Fuck, finally! Here's our Anishabi camp. Uh, the forest here has eyes. More than a few times now, you could swear you've seen something in the periphery. You never do catch it, but it's there. You're in a forest and something is watching you. You're almost certain of it. Oh, well, I don't know. How do I want to check it out? Um, should I use binoculars, binoculars, binoculars? Scope, scope. I have a ridiculous amount of items on me, which is probably the reason why we're so overburdened. Jesus, look at this shit. What, am I opening up my own shop or something? Anyway, let's use botany here for a second and get an idea what's happening over here. You stoop to the ground and look at some of the plants here. If this is a creature's natural habitat, maybe there will be clues. At first, you see little that catches your eye. You can't see anything to distinguish the forest from the lot from the last. But then you notice it. Something has pruned some of the fruit-bearing plants here. It's subtle, and you almost dismiss it as critter activity. However, something deliberately and completely stripped these plants of anything edible. You're in a forest? Alright, cool. Let's go into trapping now. You stoop to the ground and look at some of the plants here. If this is a creature's natural habitat, maybe there will be some clues. At first, so this is the same thing or what? That's the same thing. So, botany and trapping give you the same result. Oh, that's a little bit disappointing. Alrighty, so we could turn back, but no, no. We want to continue going. Actually, let's use our binoculars to scan the area. You stop moving and start looking carefully into the endless foliage. Your eyes dart from one space to the next, trying to take it all in the distant shapes of the forest. You see nothing unusual, however, and the fleeting images at the edges of your vision, whatever they were, seem to be either gone or invisibly waiting for your next move. Let's go inside. Whatever, this thing can go stuff itself, you're going in. Paneling onward, all seems still again. You begin to wonder if what you saw was your mind playing tricks on you, or maybe you passed into and then out of a creature's territory. Your thoughts are interrupted when you notice something is way off to your side. It's humanoid in shape and wearing clothes, but it also has a face as white as plaster with raccoon-like blackness where its eyes should be. It's staring right at you and it makes your neck chill. So we could try to call out to it, get ready to fight, run away, or hide. Let's try to call out to it. Try not to tip the scales towards hostilities, you call out to it. In return, it raises a hand, palms towards you. Several more appear simultaneously in a wide circle around you, seemingly from nowhere. Stranger, says the first. You have entered protected lands. What are your intentions? I assure you, they're all good. <laughs> Peaceful, absolutely. Yeah, let's start fighting like 70 of these guys right now. Good idea. I don't mean any harm, you say. The figure speaks again. We will take you to speak to one of our elders. You must wear this. It holds out a blindfold and restraints. Okay. Uh, okay, you say, and await further instructions. One of them fixes a blindfold over your eyes. Meanwhile, your hands are bound behind your back. Despite the restraints, the whole process proceeds without any unnecessary force. You seem to be handled with both caution and respect. You're turned in place and led forward through the forest. Minutes of silent traveling later, you begin to hear sounds. Not forest sounds, but people sounds. Tools being worked, a crack from a fire. Voices startled you from strained listening. Your captors are talking, but not in English, not in anything you recognize. One of them calls out, and a distant voice responds. It sounds like you're entering a camp of some kind. You smell wood burning, your arrival causes a stir, and you stop for a moment, for a moment, more talking. You're turned in place a bit and then taken away from the heat of the flame for a while. Finally, your journey stops, your bindings and blindfold removed. As the blurriness clears, you see what you're you see that you're in a village. Dome like buildings surround a great fire, with equal parts animal hide and repurposed junk for walls and shelter. Around the village, a mix of Regular folk and shock-faced warriors go about their business. Many are more than casually interested in your arrival. You're taken to a meeting area near the Great Fire. In front of you, a portly middle-aged woman stands by one of the warriors. Her jacket is the color of a sunset, again, against which is silhouetted a majesty gray crane. Hey, man, she says. Pretty crazy gig we got here, right? She looks around as if arriving here with you for the first time. Oh, she reaches a fan forward. Michelle. 
I usually get roped into talking to foreigners. Sort of comes with the badge. She points her thumb at the crane. I G-Jack do them. Come on. She turns towards the village. Let's walk. A small entourage in tow, you walk idly towards the fire. I gotta ask, Michelle begins. You know a Philip? She begins care. She's being careful not to telegraph too much, but you can tell this is a big thing on her mind. Yeah, <laughs> as a matter of fact, I'm Philip. My name's Philip Kindred, you reply. Does that count? I knew it! She pumps her fist. Like she just won a bed. Old Ghostface McStabberson back here had you figured for a grave robber. <laughs> What's Ghostface? You know me? What are you people? Let's get down to the point, right? She knows me. So wait, you interrupt. You know me. Yeah, she exclaims. Well, no, not personally. Here. She steers you towards the hut. Warm light spills from within, and she draws back a flap to reveal a mixture of handmade and recycled furnishings. Michelle reaches over a cluttered desk and pulls the frame down from amidst dried roots, photos, and other mementos on the wall. She hands the frame to you. You hold up the frame, examining the yellowish photograph. It appears to be a newspaper clipping, done in that old small-town print where the colors don't line up. It's you, or at least someone who looks just like you. You've been here before, she says, looking over your shoulder. And check out the talisman. You look incredulously at her a moment, then closer at the photo. Sure enough, you're wearing the talisman. The photo's caption reads, Local website editor rekindles interest in native history. You flip the frame over, looking for more, but there is only one thing scrawled on the back. September 2019. My turn, she says. Where have you been hiding since this? She holds up the photo. And more importantly, how come you don't look any older? Yeah, I guess we'll tell her about the facility. Ever heard of Gaijus Cryo Facility? Might as well cut through the chase. I guess that explains a few things, she ponders. Unfortunately, you continue, I can't tell you much more than that. I can't remember anything before coming out of Cryo. It's like the hibernation wiped my memory. She still looks deep in thought. What is the talisman? Yes. So wait, do you know anything about the talisman? This is getting more complicated, not less. Know anything about it, she chuckles. My man, we made it for you. Then she adds, well, sort of. You just stare, dumbfounded. Oh, this is good. She seems delighted at our confusion. Let me explain, she begins, faking bad English. It's a protective talisman, she starts. Some ancestors carried pieces of copper for both luck and protection. This one, she points to yours, you brought to us. My father said you were hiding from a spirit and that you needed protection from it. She continues, the symbol isn't ours, I don't recognize it. And I'm not sure where you got it, she admits. But my father asked the Midewini of the Nuke Dudam, you call the Medicine Man, to give this talisman power to protect you. The spirit wouldn't harm you while it was on. It was a f powerful ritual, she recalls. It's one of the events my father recounted on several occasions. She points at the talisman again. That thing was a big deal around here. A spirit was after me? Did you say spirit? She holds up her palms. Hey man, your words, not mine. My father said you were talking about something hunting you. For what? What'd I do? Don't ask me. I don't even know if you told my father. Well, then, what was the spirit? Oh, man. My father probably could have told you. You had some pretty specific instructions, and not all of them were, uh, germane to us, if you catch my drift. Germane? What do you mean? Like, foreign? Yeah. This thing you were running from, it wasn't ripped from the pages of our history, if you know what I mean. We've never seen anything or heard anything of it. Still, some spirits are like that. Not everyone sees them the same. Can you help me get rid of it? Worth a shot, right? Me? Probably not. Uh, she concedes, your hopes take a dive. I'm not even sure the, the people could do it. You mean the Anishabe? Yeah, sorry, she chuckles. That's just our word for the people. Anishabe, actually, for plural. Anyway, this is a spirit from someplace else. How do I get rid of the spirit? Why am I in this photo? How long ago was this? I think I've heard enough. How do I get rid of the spirit? So what now? Suppose I want to get rid of this thing chasing me? Cause, you know, I do. What next? Well, somehow you got, its, you got its attention, right? I mean, something made you seek us out when you did and not before. You're thinking whatever that, what might be a clue? Totally. You did come to us after your work on that website, the new Erd Ostersund thing. So spare isn't like the internet. She chuckles. Think about it a sec. You had to knock on a fair number of doors to get that information, right? Probably disturb some... Probably serve more than one spirit digging up that data. So, we've narrowed it down to any paranormal occurrence listed on a website trying to list every single one in history. She laughs. Yeah, now you're getting it. You shake your head. Seriously, though, 
We printed off a section, and this place ain't exactly high-tech, you know? I'm thinking there's got to be more complete copy out there somewhere. You mean like the cyber si uh, cafe down the block? Jeez, man, stop being such a downer. Sorry. Optimism's a lot of work these days. So is being mopey all the time. It's out there. Has to be. I mean, this data was on everyone's computer at one point, right? At least everyone who contributed to it. That's true. It can't be wiped out from everywhere. And if it is, then you're screwed, Philip. That brings a smile to your face. Well, at least you agree on that. Come on, she says. Let's show you around. She starts heading towards the Great Fire. Alrighty, guys. So, we're going to wrap it up here for today. At this point, we get a chance to sell some stuff, get a meal, get some treatment as well. We need some treatment from the witch doctor over here. But, um, I'm going to do this next episode. I'm going to do most of the grindy stuff off camera. I'll come back. I'll show you what I picked up from the store. And we'll continue going forward because now we want to go back to DMC and see what that silver urn that we have is all about. So, hope you guys enjoyed it with a thumbs up. I will catch you next time.